Okay. Um, the online conference will have two days. This morning or tonight, if you are tuning in from Asia, we will have the first section on Shanghai film, which includes a panel discussion and a show and tell followed by a live screening of a, uh, a short film. And for the second section, we have invited special guest speakers, special thanks to Beijing Contemporary Art Foundation. And we will have a screening of a documentary and an interview with two professors. And the section three is one more panel on Shanghai film before a long break. So um, let's welcome our first panel and uh, panelists be prepared. I will make you uh, panelists now so audience can see your face and hear you so let me do that Okay, so um, panelists, we are ready whenever you are. Oh, I think we missing one person. Yeah, well, thanks you long for moderating and organizing this fascinating panel, and uh, I'd like to for joining our panel uh, on Women of Shanghai today. My name is Jin Chen, and I'm a PhD candidate at the School of Creative Media of City University of Hong Kong. So before moving into our presentation, I'd like to uh, do a brief introduction on our panelists. So uh, the panel consists of uh, three presentations in the two panelists, and they are Dr. April Wei, Wei Gailan, who is an assistant professor of cinema and television program at Beijing Normal University, Hong Kong Baptist University United International College. Her studies mainly involve narrative art, transmedia storytelling, gender and politics in filmmaking, film history, and documentary studies. Another scholar in this panel is Yan Jingrui, an MA student at the School of, Creative, uh, at the School of Art Peking University. Her research interests include Chinese film history, medium archaeology, and gender. So let's uh, start our presentation. And, uh, I'm going to go first. Um, she and another uh, Ashrit was the only two women staff in the theater and their work became more intense after the movie starts because audiences at that time were not used to the darkness and the activity of cinema. They helped the audiences to find their exact seat in the darkness and adapt to the new cinema rituals that are different from the opera theaters one. Their salary in 1935 was um, 20 to 24 yuan monthly. And they are also facing inevitable sexual harassment in the disguise of a dark environment in the theaters. So they are male audiences sometimes pretend to ask for directions, but actually intend to um, touch or grab them. Um, one of the most luxurious theaters in Shanghai, the Grand Theater, um, Da Guangming, hires Russian ladies to provide ushering services. So according to the historical record of Grand Theater, in 1936, there were um, 69 employees and including eight Russian ladies who are shreds, and they are responsible for serving up, upper, upstairs in the theater. So those um, Russian ladies were dressed in custom-made uniforms by the first class fashion house. Those, usher, uh, those Russian uh, ushers were actually become a beautiful sight on the second floor. So there were audiences at that time who went to the movie theater just to witness their beauty and elegance. Um, in the second part, I'm 
going to talk about the temptations and troubles these asteroids were facing in the darkness of the movie theaters. And I would like to share um, two cartoons post uh, in 1939 Shanghai Magazine. So the left one says that the new asteroids in the theater is said to be very afraid of the dark. And when the movie starts, she hug hugs the pillow and calls mom. And the right one says, on the first night of the new film, a bachelor audience is aroused. She takes away a female staff and wants to keep her as a souvenir. These two cartoons both reveal that uh, about the difficult situations that Ashray's working in cinema uh, were facing at their time. So about uh, the temptations. The darkness of the movie theater adds an atmosphere of sexual arousal to the Ashrays, and they usually are harassed by male audiences during the movies. Um, in a 1937 newspaper, an article wrote that, wrote that in the shroud of darkness, the young men for sexual hunger and thirst can use this to spice things up. What, which is naturally very understandable under the eye of sex only historic view people. And we can also see that Ashray's photo was posted um, in the newspaper in the 1930s. So here I argue that um, in 1930s, um, regarding the Chinese cinema experience to those audiences, they went to movie theaters not to see the movies, but to see around the movies. Like one says in the magazine article of the 1930s, um, she says, sitting in a movie theater, it's not necessarily the shape and color on screen that excites you. Maybe there are things in front and behind your seat off the screen that excite you more than what you see on screen. Ashrays also have troubles of their own. So most Ashrays uh, come from the lower class of society. Instead of liberating women from household, they choose this job because they must provide for their family. In 1935, the newspaper pub published a piece of saddening news. An Ashray committed suicide and left a suicide note to the director of the theater. Her name was Zhang Meiying, and she worked at Lianhua Cinema. She was 20 years old. Her family was in difficulties regarding uh, financially, and she chose to commit suicide by poisoning herself. Anna describes her working experience in movie theaters like, I was begging a living in the dark. Um, then in the third part, I will discuss two images that Ashrays were portrayed by the public. And these are living billboards and bad women. Um, in the operation of cinemas, women workers became the living billboards to attract audiences. Their pictures and the stories was, were published in magazines and newspapers to be watched and discussed. They become inside female stars in the theaters. And these are pictures I um, cut it from the magazines and newspapers in 1930s. And in 1937, a magazine devoted a whole page to show the style and appearance of these cinema uh, women workers. Uh, on this page, an article says, it is perhaps a strange phenomenon that no matter how lowly a cinema is, it simply does not pay attention to the movie itself. But as long as it has those ladies, its business will flourish and will not fail. Women working in major cinemas are presented by number. Um, their name usually um, appears under and near their uh, pictures. Uh, so we can see like Guanghua number three, Guanghua number one, Liangyo number four, Guotai number six. Um, hiring new ushers in cinemas also became the subjects uh, in local business newspapers. They became one of the motivations that audience 
go to the cinema. A business journal in 1930s reported a local cinema hiring new usherates, and the usherates news was um, posted with the uh, news about stars and films, like they are all a part of the cinema culture and information. Um, it describes those ladies like elegant, slim, solemn, and the appearance is beautiful, the smiles it, uh, are touching. Um, Ashrays were not portrayed positively in public opinion at that time. They were excluded from the mainstream discussion of professional women at, their, at the time and were still seen as women in improper occupations. In the newspaper, one Ashrays shares a story an usherate fell in love with the college student, but when the men's parents learned of the women's occupation, they said indignantly, what you, what? you are actually going to get involved with the women in the theater? What an ungenerous brute. And the usherate says, helplessly, aren't the women in theater also living by their strengths? So, um, what actually makes uh, the, those archeries considered bad women? Is that because they are women who work in the dark cinematic space? Or they are women who absorb too much movie content, which, which is still kind of fresh and unfamiliar to the Chinese audiences. They may consider it like unhealthy, dangerous. Or they are women who work between various and all kinds of uh, male audiences instead of staying home. Uh, we can read another article that describes us rates. It says, um, those women staff of Shanghai cinema are all beautiful and decorated with elegant uniforms. They show bare arms and legs in order to attract people's attention. Regarding the movie content, he says, um, those women, although they are still young ladies, facing those erotic things in, in, the cinema, in the films, they act like very normal. But if true naive ladies watch this, they should have flushed their face and bowed their heads. Um, in the last part, I want to stress that ushers mostly are women from lower class societies who do not have uh, this much opportunity to access cinema as a modern and advanced media. A large part of our streets have become cinephile and developed an intimate psychological relationship with cinema and those actresses. In the company of electrical lights and loving stories on screen, they have the privilege to approach this movie content Seeing those touching stories on screen, ushers see their own fate in those act actresses acting. The theater in this way become a shared space, shared women's space between actresses and ushers. Um, in 1935, after Ran Ling Yu's suicide, the tabloid published a story about a 24 year old usher who always loved watching Ran's movies when um, she was working in the theater. After learning of Ran's suicide, she became so sad that she wanted to go with Ran Ling Yu as a star, and she took poison herself. Um, besides that, absorbing lifestyles that movies have portrayed, Ashrays also become fashionable and open-hearted. We can see a picture um, of Ashrays in Shanghai cinema who cross-dressed as men in 1930s. Um, so Ashrays, they usually um, intimate the images in the movies. Their style, their perfume, and their fashion taste also constitute the modern culture of the movie theater. Um, so, uh, I want to conclude my uh, presentation. Um, in early Chinese cinema, ushers uh, actually symbolized cinemas as 
upper class consumption spaces. Because ushers, they are educated and elegant women who provide cinema explicit service and constitute the cinema experiences. They help the Chinese audiences to adapt to the modern movie experience and rituals. Ashrays were both women workers in cinemas and inside theater stars who were fantasized about and discussed about by the public. Uh, finally, Ashrays also became early women movie lovers. They are the exception for lower class women because they can have long term access to various film content. They represent a lifestyle of early Chinese cinephile and promote the modern cinema culture. Um, and that is um, on my talk. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jing Rei. That, that is a very uh, interesting and a meaningful topic. Thank you for uh, introducing us to this uh, group of women and also elaborating on how they were being portrayed and also considered uh, by the mass media as well as the uh, public discourses. Well, uh, thank you all for sharing. Uh, the city of Shanghai and women constitute the title of this panel. In this field where tradition match modernity is the main goal with West, women have also been given more opportunities around the Around the film production and the reception, women are dis we discussed that were active not only in front of and behind the camera, but also those who served for the process of film reception, which offer multiple perspectives to get into the early context and to find out what happened there. So uh, to keep kick off our conversation, uh, my question is, uh, what is the significance of uh, revisiting this woman today for the rewriting of early Chinese film history, and also in the process of uh, uh, writing early Chinese film, film history, how should we consider or position uh, them today, this woman? Yeah, that's my question. So, um, may I answer? Here. So, so may I answer yeah, the yeah, first? Yeah, April. Okay. Uh, uh, so actually, uh, when I, I when now this Yanam is placed, uh, actually it's kind of against the backdrop of understanding the history of uh, 1920s and 1930s as a trajectory. Actually, they were talking about the Chinese film actress. Um, something when we mentioned the Ben Xia uh, discourse, it's kind, of, it's kind of being like a discipline. It's kind of uh, uh, being uh, something being very passive. Yes. Being genuine actually is, means like being passive in the patriarchal society. And uh, then uh, after this uh, young Naima, this first generation, actually she's always been juxtaposed by another very, very uh, important first generation film actress. Her name is Wang Hanlun. Uh, Wang Hanlun is kind of very typical being admired uh, you know, by a lot of her uh, uh, friends. Mm, you know, she's kind of always playing the tragic. Uh, have a have a very sad manner, and also have her uh, being uh, being authentic and being uh, a very good girl, you know, off screen space. So that's somehow set up like this trajectory, and follow that in the second generation, we have we have witnessed the uh, running suicidal, you know. So actually, we have this general impression that her. Uh, the the Chinese uh, film actresses they were holding they were holding this trajectory as being authentic, being uh, genuine, and uh, being naturalistic. But actually, this all kind of uh, requirements and definition is being you know defined by this patriarchy standard. So when I uh, you know kind of uh, discover this young Namis case, I say I, I see this she's quite unconventional and she's quite unusual. Because it's so conventional and uh, she somehow being neglected, being ignored, kind of, because it's it's not uh, in the category, you know, it's not uh, in the box. So actually, uh, in the sense when we are revisiting this uh, this this case, is somehow maybe we could uh, have uh, uh, new ideas, maybe a uh, 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 new thoughts on our understanding of the Chinese early cinema because uh, we see this very wonderful one. Even uh, after like the 1940s, uh, a lot of the reports uh, on her, you know, on the life of Yang Nam, it's kind of uh, 
not as uh, exciting as in the past because uh, people always want to say the downfall of this bright star because there's this kind of corrupt, you know, uh, bankrupted uh, after after 1940s. But somehow, uh, when also when I review a lot of the, the reports, I found that a lot of people even in 1940s still could memorize her talents and remember her very usual uh, that that kind of energy, you know. So this is something quite uh, uh, you know uh, rare, but quite important for us to really have a new understanding of Chinese early cinema. That's my answer. Well, thank you, April. So here we got a question from uh, uh, Lin Shu Lin Shu Mei. So for uh, Jing Rei's presentation, and uh, uh, she's curious about whether the Auschwitz would develop or be caught into romantic relationship with the film lectures, um, the theater managers, the spectators, or any other figures working in the theaters. Were, were they paid well to the extent they uh, that they can enjoy a good modern lifestyle on their own? Thank you. Um, uh, thank you very much for the question. Um, uh, so the first question is about romantic relationship. Uh, when I was searching, uh, sorting the archives, I actually saw one says that the theater's manager was um, uh, was called harassed one of the ashrays, and um, so they uh, they went to the police and um, this kind of things. Um, and so uh, and about and the spectators, um, like I have mentioned in my presentations, um, they were actually actually fell in love with um, audience, but maybe the question is that uh, because their uh, social image was not uh, good enough, so when they really uh, get involved with men outside the theater, will they be accepted by their, by the man's family? Yep. Um, um, I hope that helps. Um, and another question is their payment. Um, so I said in the 1935, their payment was about 20 to 24 yuan. And um, I also, I was also curious about the, uh, is this enough? And so I learned that the regular workers in like factory, they were paid about 12 yuan and the actor and actress working on the uh, film, uh, film site, uh, the actor was paid like 60 yuan uh, a month. So maybe that can also um, help us imagine their payment level in, at their time. So uh, do they, can they enjoy a good modern lifestyle of their own? I think uh, it depends and um, different archers have different situations, but mainly I think they dress up uh, very um, in a modern way and a fashionable way. Yeah, thank you. Uh... Actually, I'm also very curious about your talking on archers. So um, is this a job only available in some uh, uh, specific cinema or it, it is available to all the cinemas at the time and also um are they are they worked in a full-time basis or part-time basis um it, it is four time uh four time basis um because um i read ashray when they're talking about their job they say that like um uh, how long they have to stay in the um, movie theaters and they like have to watch 15 times a day and um, um, is it available for all uh, movie theaters so the first uh, so it starts with kind of like first round movie theaters and some luxurious movie theaters because on um, this ushers they actually only serve on the upper stairs, the second stairs for the upper class audiences because they want to provide a better better uh, services by these elegant women. Um, and then I think like um, besides Shanghai, in Tianjin, Hangzhou and other cities, cinemas also have this kind of job available. 
So another question from uh, uh, Sha. I think there's a, uh, she said that uh, he or she said that, uh, I think there's a very popular trend of uh, aesthetic dancing in Hollywood in the early 20th century, although being extremely orient orientalism infused. Do you find that has uh, anything to do with the woman image portrait appeared in the public sphere? Well, I think this, uh, 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 this question is a target to which presenter? Everyone. <laughs> well, Well, considering the exp expense of uh, Yang Nai and how she couldn't even sustain her lifestyle, the ashrads uh, who need to dress up were paid pro poorly. So do you have any ideas on, on these uh, questions? Okay, I think we can get back to this question later and here. Uh, I, I, uh, since I'm so curious about uh, Jing Ri's talk, so here's another question about uh, um, uh, on your presentation. So um, I'm thinking about from a sociological perspective, uh, there's uh, uh, always a question uh, re regarding the film audience. So uh, you mentioned that they became a kind of uh, uh, imagination for a lot of uh, male viewers. So I wonder, um, that uh, this kind of role, what kind of role these uh, ashrets played in the perspective of those female spectators? Um, um, I think this is a very good question because when I was preparing this um, paper and uh, reading the old newspapers, there were actually not many reports or articles about how females see those ashrets. I think it also reveals a problem in a way. Mm, but I can uh, I can see that um, to those female um, audiences, will they like um, be a kind of fashionable model for them? But uh, this is my own perspective because I didn't really read a uh, newspaper material on your on this topic. Um, yes, we got a question from the Q&A from uh, uh, Chen Lu to uh, Dr. Uh, April, uh, April Wei. So uh, is Ben, ben Se an acting style? acting like your true self, choosing role and uh, constructing a screen persona similar to your real life uh, personalities or merely a patriarchal imagination projected onto women as a pure and uh, innocent. When a uh, seductress acting as her true life, will she be called Ben Se acting? Uh, actually, uh, uh, we have uh, two layers of understanding of Ben Se. Actually, one is coming from the 1930s. It's mentioned by the Li 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 and actually uh, being uh, addressed by many uh, filmmakers in the 1930s. So actually it's kind of official that uh, women should be or expect to be acting the Ben Se style, which likes being uh, naturalistic and being uh, authentic. And uh, in another much more broad level, actually, Ben Se acting means like you have a playing a very interesting connection between the on-screen image and off-screen image. And the Ben Se means actually you, the on-screen image and the off-screen image actually merged into each, into each other. So when uh, when people are, you know, attacked, you know, attacked with this, this Ben Se, uh, so it means like audience could decide this, this kind of merging between the two. So actually if you, are uh, you if you are uh, put this uh, Ben Sir acting to you know 
are into contemporary uh, actress or actress. Maybe you have like Zhang Ziyi, somehow in being recently being criticized for being too uh, ben se, you know, and you have in the in the opposite that you have some Maggie Zhang, it's you have it could there exert a, a very wide range of characters, which uh, it's a way of uh, showing her very excellent acting, uh, you know, acting skills. So, so this is kind of discourse is quite different from uh, which we have of the Benzer uh, discourse in the very early 20th century, you know. So in contemporary situation, uh, uh, people's attitude toward the Benzer actually are changing. Yeah, it's even changing to the quite opposite way. That's my answer. Well, uh, following this question, I, I have a question for uh, for uh, April's uh, presentation, the studies on Yang Naime. So you argue that uh, Yang Naime herself also played a part in uh, creating her image as an unconventional woman and uh, active, actively blurring the boundary between her roles and uh, her life. And uh, also you mentioned the studies of uh, Zhou Huilin and uh, according to the performance performance culture at early stage, especially the 1930s, she also have a studies performing China on, on that. And uh, uh, in her study that uh, mentioned, she mentioned that the performance of an actress on screen could be viewed as a display of, of her real life off the screen. And her performance in life was uh, seen as an extension of her uh, character on the screen. So such imagination, the perspectives that makes the actress a private life and with her role came not only from the image portrayed by uh, uh, mass media, but also from the uh, star making strategies adopted by many film companies, for example, um, which reminds me Aixia in the star right. company. So right. I wonder how do you think about the relationship between uh, Yang Naime's image as you described and the and the star making mechanism of uh, uh, film companies of the of the time. So, uh, she's quite unusual, I think, because uh, many times, uh, especially like her, the Leslie Jones case, uh, people kind of criticize the director, like Wang Gaowei, you know, playing this Spencer, like her strategy, you know, put her Leslie Jones uh, on the idea that she, she, he is actually playing herself and revealing uh, revealing himself. And so, which means that Leslie Zhang kind of want to, you know, protect his private life and they want to have set a, a boundary between uh, the on-screen image and their, his own life. But her, in, in this case, we see Yang Nam's case is quite interesting. It's just kind of, you know, because we see all the reports from the, uh, like her, uh, the media is like her, she kind of have this uh, energy and uh, kind of a talent to, really um, uh, make her the news, you know, really to generate a capital news with all kind of uh, uh, capabilities. Uh, so uh, she seems to have this kind of her personality, like she was quite enjoying this kind of practice. So, and uh, I, I see no effort from, you know, all the reports that she want to protect her, her life and protect her, uh, her privacy. So this is something quite, She's quite an interesting character. Well, thank you, thank you so much. Um, and uh, uh, and also for Jing Rui. Um, uh, so I'd like to get back to the first question I I proposed at the uh, at the very beginning uh, after the presentation. So um, so if you so because you mentioned the offerets, so I wonder if we uh, consider these offerets from uh, uh, perspectives of uh, social history. Uh, what changes do you think they will bring to the history of uh, film reception, uh, uh, writing the film history, the reception history in China? Um, I think this is a very important question regarding um, studying our streets. Um, um, I, um, I, for now, I think our streets because um, um, they are uh, like providing a service that can only uh, suitable for uh, 
this um the service that Ashris was providing was only because um cinema culture and cinema consumption and because the presenting of Ashris it actually distinguishes uh cinema consumption from early um like what Chinese audience was used to like uh, vaudeville and opera house. So they they like, because um, Usher is just, uh, guiding them to their exact seat and get used to the dark, dark environment. They learned the ritual of cinemas and the order of cinema uh, watching. So I think um, from this, we can, um, kind of learn how Chinese audience really get used to seeing movies in the theaters and how they um, how their reception of um, cinema uh, of the theaters. Yeah, thank you. Um, and also I'd like to provide some answers for, for this question because uh, 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 in my research uh, on the experience of Pu Fengqing, actually, I found that, uh, um, so I think Pu Fengqing's experience actually also confirms or demonstrates the uh, difficulties for women to take part in the film industry. Actually, after reading her experience, I found it was almost impossible for most of women to write for screen because uh, you can find that she is uh, uh, self-sufficient and uh, uh, she received the higher education and also um, she she has the capacity so she's so unrepresentative and she's the only one in in the 1920s who had had her film made into a, a script made into a film and uh, oh I'm sorry another one is Yang Naimei but uh, Yang Naimei is another example who is also not uh, who is not so unrepresentative so I think uh, Pu Shunqing's uh, through Pu Shunqing's case we could also um, learn why women, why other women didn't write for screen. So uh, I think that's uh, my answer for the questions I proposed. And uh, here I got for uh, I got the question from uh, the, the question from uh, the same person. Sha, uh, sorry for being so confusing. Let me try to rephrase. What I mean is that uh, uh, to what extent do you think the consumerist based culture normally targeted towards female audiences in the early 20th century helped to create this ambiguous female space and autonomy. I think this question may be um, um, going to uh, uh, Yan Jingrui, right? So like something related with their, uh, you know, general um, space in the big city, right? Something related with capitalism, and there is a as a very one very interesting example. Uh, thank you for the question, uh, Christine Harris. Um, uh, I think it's a, uh, it's a quite specific, you know, uh, going from one to another, like in Yang Naime's case, uh, uh, especially when she was making the film of Wondrous Woman, she's the, the owner of her own company. So actually she's kind of uh, uh, in, initiating everything. But in a general uh, case, like in Leslie Zhang and many other uh, Chinese film stars, I think her, her Things could be quite complicated. Sometimes, like uh, this kind of a uh, uh, conspiracy between the stars and the company. Sometimes, you know, like in Leslie Jones' case, uh, he actually being expelled, you know, uh, from this uh, 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 from this decision. So, uh, in many of the I read many of this uh, their conversations and their uh, things reviewed that uh, especially in the making of the film, like. Uh, uh, which film? Sorry, I, I forgot the name of the film. Uh, uh, she was actually complaining that the, uh, he was actually complaining he's being cheated uh, by the director. Uh, so so uh, it's, it's, it varies from case to case. So for Jing Rui, in 
uh, did you come across any first-hand uh, accounts of their work written by Ashraf themselves? Um, they are most uh, they are mostly um, interviews uh, by the magazines and newspapers. Um, that is uh, the materials I used, um, and um, since I will keep on doing this research, or maybe I can uh, went to Shanghai because before um, I didn't have the chance, and later if I can find in the archives, and it maybe can help. Yeah, for now, it, I didn't use the first account. So uh, I think we're running out of time. So I think that's all for our panel's presentation. Thanks for attending. Join us today. So Yulong, do you have anything to mention? Oh, no, thank you so much for our uh, first panel. So uh, we're gonna switch to... Thank you.